Okay, so for the next session here, we're going to be learning about something called loops, which I just knocked my camera out here. Pause it for a second. Okay. All right, so now we're going to learn about loops. I'm just hoping that this isn't crooked again. Okay, so we have our program from the previous one. I'm going to, well, before we um, learn about loops, since we already have a disk, I'm going to show you how to save it. So we're just going to hit reset there. You see the type list, you know it's in memory there. Type the word save, hit the quote, which is a shift to, press the word D for disk. And you're going to hold shift next to the L and you're going to hit a semicolon like that. So it indicates that you're looking for just the letter D isolated by whatever you type after it, which is going to be the name of the file. And we'll just call this one poem, since that's the way it is, it's a poem. You're going to hit the period or the dot. And you type the word BAS. It's called an extension, which allows you to recognize it as a basic program. And you can either hit enter or just quote, I like to to close it like that so it looks clean nice and clean but you don't have to you can just hit enter and it'll figure it out anyway and you just hit return and now it'll save your program when it's done you'll see the word ready and of course if you list it you'll still see it now what we're going to do is we're going to take a chance we're going to erase it type new hit reset hit list now there's nothing in memory. Now I'm going to teach you how to load it. Type the word load, hit shift 2, the word D, just like we did, the quote, and the name of your file. Now you see ready, you type the word list, and viola. There's our program. Now on disk, we can retrieve it anytime we'd like to. But for now, we're going to erase it. We are going to start something different. We're going to learn about loops. Now look at the lines I just typed in. 110 shows congratulations, and we know that's going to print the word congratulations with the little quote after it, the exclamation mark. And then after that you see the word go to, 110. Now notice 110 is right here and not here. So what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever is in 110 from line 120, go back here, and just keep doing this. I'll run it in a minute to show you. Whoops. So I'm using the arrow key, so if you go up and down, I'll show you what I'm doing. Up, down, up, down. So it's going to repeat these lines over and over and over again. Now watch when we run it, and you'll see it. So there it goes. It's repeating everything from the first line because it's going to the exact same line. Now if you hit the break, it'll stop it. We're going to learn another trick. Now we're going to list the word 110. We're going to use our arrow keys as we learned. And we're going to move over. You can also hit tab to be a little bit faster. For those who want to be very quick. Now we're at the very end here. We're going to erase some lines here. Well, actually, we don't even need to erase. We're just going to hit the... We're going to put a comma after it like that. And hit enter. Now we're going to run it. And you're going to see something magical. So now it's actually tabbing over. So the, here, the comma key is acting as a tab. It's tabbing over when it gets to the next control and moving it all the way over to the screen. Now if you break it, you'll see it. Notice how this controls this congratulations here, and there's a space in between here, so that's the tab until it gets to the next line. It's tab, tab, and tab, and each time to kind of give that what they call a barber pole effect. They also teach, and you can put spaces in between it here, so we can go over here. Oh, no, no, semicolon. Oh, yeah, let's show you that. So instead of the comma, let's use the semicolon, and we'll hit enter, and we'll run it this time. And this time, it moves everything on one line. It kind of glues everything together, so to speak. You can also put spaces in here. I want to show you that. 
put a few spaces, and then you can use the semicolon to kind of give it a little bit of an easier reading, and it kind of creates the bar reverse barber pole effect, so to speak. Because it's putting the space on, reading the next one space, and so on, so I think that's why they wanted to show you that. The next thing they wanted to show you is how to see how much memory you have. You just type the word FRE. You hit Shift 9 to get that character, 0, and Shift 0. And right there, 32369 shows you how much memory or how many bytes are available. That's 32,369 bytes. Bytes is just another way of saying how much is memory. Your computer is actually 64 bytes or 64,000 characters. Okay, so what's next here? Okay, so now they want to show you how to put more than one line on the line. So we'll list this again. And on 110, we'll use our print again. We're going to type very similar to what we did earlier. And this time, we're going to use that semicolon. And then we're going to type after it another command, print. You just won the lottery. Oops. Now, for those who might be savvy enough to figure this out, go ahead and um, say it or whatever you think it's going to do. Um, what it's essentially doing here, and we'll run it, and then I'll explain it. So, you notice what it did there is it's doing our loop again. Congratulations, you just won the lottery, and it's repeating again. But what it's doing is it's putting both of these on the line. Instead of doing everything on one line, it's doing this. And then this quote is allowing you to separate with another set of commands. So anytime you, I mean that quote, I'm sorry, semicolon, not semicolon, colon, every time you use the colon after it, it's going to allow you to continue another set of commands that the computer can recognize. So if you wanted to type whatever after there, you could put a print after there or whatever. We'll, we'll go over that more and more as you go. But that's how to kind of merge your code together. When you want to try to start doing more advanced programs, you'll, you'll, need, help, you'll need to understand that. So, and Hopefully that makes sense. So here's an example, too. I wanted to show you this one. Congratulations. You see how it's got the print, and it's got the colon print. So again, it's whatever's before that print and after the colon, those are two separate commands. This is a very simple program. We're not going to save it, but it's a loop. If you want to save it, you can. I'm just going to erase mine. We don't need it. Very simple. Easy to type back in. So we're going to start on to the next thing. And what we're going to be learning now is how to respond to what's called input on your computer. Now, input is a way to receive information that your computer can, you could type in something and you can receive it based on whatever you type in. Kind of like typing in a text box for those who are internet savvy. When you type something into a text box and you want to get information into the computer, you type it, it'll remember it, and it'll be able to print results out to you. It all started with basic. So I think I, I erased it. Yep, okay, so I erased it. Okay. Now we're going to learn something new here. You just saw me do a dollar sign, and we're going to just type this in for now and show it to you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to skip a step that they're not showing. That's which I think is essential. And I'm going to do this. They do it a little bit down further in the program, but I wanted to at least show it to you now. So what this is doing is line 10 is saying dimension. Dim stands for dimension. It means set aside an area of memory for our control characters since they only contain this up to a certain default. 100 is allowing you to put 100 characters in this variable. This is known as a string. If you look over here next to this, you see this little dollar sign there? The dollar sign represents a string. A string is a way of putting in characters, letters, numbers, everything into one place. Instead of just typing in numbers, you can do everything now. You can do like we saw the earlier with the quotes. Anything in quotes can go in here. Pretty much anything. And then what it's doing is it's going to print the string on the screen. So if we run it right now, we won't see anything. Oops. Put myself in mode. Oh, actually, we got an error. 
Okay, wait, what did I do wrong? Let me try typing in A-N-S-W-E-R-S. -S. Oh, because I typed answer. Huh. You learned about our first thing here. Error is just basically... I'm going to look up error 9 just to kind of read it to you to be very specific. You look up in the back of the book, you can get the error codes. It's in Appendix D. And it says, array or string dim error. The dim size exceeded 5460 for numeric arrays or 32767 for strings, which is this one. Uh, and it says, um, an array or string was redimensioned. Reference was made to an undimensioned array or string. So that's what the real, the real truth is the last part I just read, where it said reference was made to an undimensioned array or string. So essentially it says, what is answer? Now look, look real carefully. I'll list the lines separately to show you what's going on here. Look at 10. It says A-N-S-W-E-R-S -S quote. Now look at 20. <clears throat> so I'm glad we made this mistake. It says A-N-S-W-E-R, but look up here, it's missing the S. So right now we have in dimension answer. But if we change this to answer, it'll print. But I just wanted to show that to you. So if we type the S in the string, we'll get our correct result. So it's not showing anything because we haven't done anything to answer yet. I'm going to show you how to insert information into the answers. I'm going to take a, skip a step from what they're doing just to kind of show you. So we're going to take out line 20. We're going to replace it with A-N-S-W-E-R-S -S string equals, and we're going to put our name in it just for now. You can put your name in here. Whoops. And then we're going to print. Now another trick you can do here is you can use the arrow keys, move up there, type the word 30, hit enter, break over top of everything, and now you've got all the answer, all the information. You just kind of, kind of like a faster way of, you know, erasing what you typed in earlier and going to that line and reinserting it back into the computer's memory. Now if we run it, it should say Steve Morrow. So now it's got an array named Steve Morrow. We know that by typing print, A-N-S-W-E-R-S, -S, string, just like it shows on line 30, and now it shows answers contains the string Steve Morrow in it. So whatever you type into that array, you can also do it in immediate mode. It'll type in, you know, whatever you type in there. And you type answers, and it'll show the new word in there. So that's how you erase what's already in there and kind of put it in memory. So we're going to erase these lines because they don't exist in this program. But I just wanted to show you that before we go into the more stuff that they wanted to teach you. I'm going to start typing these next lines. <clears throat> 